All right, here we go, Coach. First press conference of the 2014 season. It's it been a significant summer for APU Athletics, completing the three-year transition to NCAA Division II membership. How much has that development long-term towards membership in Division II, how much has that factored into the preparation of the coaching staff and your players during that transition time? Well, I think it's, it's such a rigorous uh, process that they take you through, and, and for the good. Uh, I think uh, all along we've seen it as we have mentally, we've organizationally, we've just continued to grow. And actually, that, going through that process has made this, uh, this organization that much better. I thought, man, we've come out of it refined, we've come out of it a bit more efficient and streamlined in how we do our systems. Uh, it's helped, uh, you know, really bridge even our whole university with this athletic department. And, and, you know, this university is outstanding and we always see ourselves as a part of it. It's, it's one. It's, we're not the athletic department is separate. And so the transition for the NA, from the NAI to, to, to NCA has done uh, done a really good job of practically putting some processes in place to say, hey, we are really all of one voice here at Azusa Pacific. Um, coaching staff-wise, I thought it's done a very good job of helping us elevate our game in regards to the recruiting uh, be more efficient with things. I know I, I really enjoy how the calendar year is governed by the NCA, uh, the, the times and that you can go out with your recruiting. So it helps helps keep the priorities in place, and you have some deadlines on top of you to to make sure you're being efficient with it and keeping the main thing and the main thing as the main thing up front when it's the right time. Um, you know, and I think you know recruiting wise, it's just helped being in this whole in the Western region and being the only Division two uh, football playing university in this real southwest here, I thought with the with the footprint we have of, of athletes in our area, the local high school coaches, uh, the families, uh, they've really embraced us and they realize that Azusa Pacific is a destination school for athletes of a variety of caliber, and, and so we are now being able to garner the attention of uh, athletes who would be considered star ratings of different rivals and stuff and they're 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 knowing hey Azusa Pacific is a place I need to look at because that, that's a that's a place I want to play in Southern California so it's exciting so I'm really fired up to see that now we've made whole and, and we're ready to play out eligible now. Great. Back here. Uh, you enter as a defending conference champion uh, for the first time in the program's history. How does that change the way you approach the year knowing that there's a target on your back? Well, I think I look at it completely different. I think it's every year you do you approach it with uh, first and foremost uh, as a head coach. How do I help create uh, a, re a new reality for this football program and for every the coaches and the individuals that that play for us? How do we keep a, a better reality for them? I think you know Dr. Wallace, our fearless leader, is uh, he's kind of one of the things I took away from our conversations. He shows up every day. How do I make it better? And so that's really the mentality I think I've I've learned to embrace as well. And I've learned from him is that hey, how do I come in and make it better? So while we are a defending uh, conference champion, and while we're being ranked in uh, national polls already, and receiving a lot of national attention, um, that's all nice. Uh, it's just, however, that's it's a completely different mindset here. And our attitude keeps it such that we realize that those external things are just data points. We're really just trying to focus on what's internal here, what can, we can take care of, what are we responsible for, and it's our heart from the coaching staff as a whole. Of, of coming to work every day and saying, how do we make this a better reality for our players so that we can uh, blaze a better path for them so they can experience um, uh, not only academically, uh, but socially and spiritually just a better reality. Because we want from the day they get here, from the day they leave, we want them to become champions in life. And so we're trying to, to blaze the trail for them in that. So. Having a, a championship under our belt, it's great. It's what we want. We want that to be every single year, uh, but yet it doesn't. It's not the impetus of why we do this. It's the. It's just a. It's a data point, and it's just some fruit we were able to pick. And something you just said about some of the awards and things that you've you've won. I mean, this summer you guys are recognized as a top twenty-five Division Two by Lindy's and Sporting News in their national preview. You've got some preseason All-Americans, the reigning yeah. conference players of the year. Yeah. Uh, you also have these academic conference championships back-to-back yeah. -back for the GNAC. And how do you, I guess, keep all these awards uh, for stuff that happens on the field and, right. and balance them out with guys who are producing you know, off the field as well? Yeah. Uh, well, and, and you know, I failed to mention, just, you know, the back-to-back the -back, -back GNAC academic champion is outstanding for us. And that's, as a coaching staff, I couldn't be more proud of it. Uh, and 
to know that we were able to accomplish a GPA this last year that not only did it win the Academic Champion Award, but it was also the highest GPA in, in for the GNAC in football history for them. Uh, you know, that shows a lot about what's happening in this program, what we're, what we're calling people out to greatness. I think we, we, uh, we want to speak life into every one of our players. I don't care what your academic background has been. We're going to call you to a standard here academically to be able to express on a daily habits that are going to make you successful. So it's not so much of what is the greatest. Are you a critical thinker? Are you learning how to think? Are you learning how to apply the material? And as we teach them that, you're seeing, once again, the data points of, hey, a great GPA, so enough so it can win us a back-to-back -back, uh, academic champion. So in that, it's, it just, it's a collective mindset that we have completely different here. It's, it's our attitude that we have. Um, and while the external can see us for the, 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 uh, the, all, the accolades and the, and the success that, that people do mark us you know, as, as winning, um, what we do is we focus on what is, you know, what is the actual process of winning. And uh, from the individual, from our core values into that process, we put it together on a, on a daily basis and we work very hard to just keep our, that the center of our, our crosshairs to help these young men keep growing. And, and one more, you know, offensively, you're led by Terrell Watson, who recognized as uh, preseason national player of the year by Lindy's preseason All-American. He broke basically every major rushing record in the APU history book. Uh, yeah. There's running backs like Christian Okoye and Jack Williams that he got past. What's left for him to accomplish this year as he leads yeah. that offense, uh, that veteran offense? Yeah, I think it, it just, uh, I think that's once again showing you the different mindset. It's not what's left to accomplish. It's it's what's it's the opportunity to be Terrell, the opportunity for the the offense uh, and the collective team to be their absolute very best. You know, I don't think Terrell never set out to be. I want to break Christian Okoye or Jack Williams' record. Uh, Terrell sought out to be as, hey, I want to be the best football player I can be. I want to be the best teammate I can be. Uh, I want to be the the guy who keeps learning all the time and whatever his ceiling is. That's what he wants to achieve, and perhaps he breaks through. So, what's left for Terrell is the is is the standard of hey, he needs to maximize his potential while he's here. Um, the uh, the accolades and and also the attention from the NFL and all that those are all great things. But the reality is that person of Terrell is why he's so great is that he's trying to be the absolute best Terrell he possibly can be. Because it's one of the things that we always talk about is is that, hey, there's just one you, and, and you got to be the very best you you can be. Uh, and those gifts unused are really just gifts abused. So we're going to, you know, for all of our players, is, hey, maximize yourself while you're here. And if you do that, that that's a successful college football career. So uh, us as coaches, and just like all the players, uh, they take, we apply that same standard, not only to Terrell, but to every single player, of Tyler Thornton, uh, to the incoming freshman is that, hey, we need you to be the best you, and we're not going to let you get away with anything less than that. So that high standard is just constantly being called out of all of them. Uh, over your question from the GNAC Media, okay. concerning your offense, can you talk about your quarterback situation? Uh, how do you see it right now? How do you see it going into camp? Well, I see it very competitive. I think we're going into the fall camp the same way we came out of spring with the same uh, depth chart where uh, Nick Owens will be uh, is, is a starter, and uh, Andrew Elfers is the number two, and uh, San Diego tra State transfer uh, Chad Jeffries is bit number three, um, and that's how we'll start camp out. I think we have got a uh, collective group there that is highly motivated, extremely talented, uh, and all want the very best for this program. So uh, I'm excited to see how Coach Carlton and the rest of the offensive staff uh, continue to draw the best out of them, and we'll see in, in a few weeks here uh, how that shakes out. I'm really excited about the, having the Nick Owens back as our senior. Uh, he brings a real peace and uh, calm to the, to the huddle. He, uh, he brings a, a confidence and he can throw the deep ball well as well as make very good adjustments and on the run he's a real threat too. Uh, one more question from the GNAC. Uh, your defense last year was crucial in, in winning the GNAC title. Uh, yeah. You lose six of the seven leading tacklers from that defense and return just three starters. Uh, how do you replace all those? players and what they were able to produce on the field for you? Well, I think that's one of the things we look at every season is its own life. Um, while 2013 was just, I mean, uh, a year to remember, um, 
it's its own life. And so we're not necessarily saying, hey, but these other guys are going to come in and take those positions. You have to be this other person. You have to be Jake Henderson. Um, well, there's only one Jake Henderson. And just the same as there's only this one uh, person who will take over that spot. So we'll, we'll have our own unique blend on this year based off of what we have personnel-wise. But I know this is that we're, we're young, we're athletic, uh, they're focused, and, they're, and they are hungry as all get out. And we have a defensive standard here that is extremely high. Uh, we'll find replacements for those roles that, uh, with guys that are going to keep that standard and uh, they're going to run and they're going to they're going to hit and they're going to be aggressive. Uh, they're going to play great team defense. They're going to cause turnovers, uh, and they're going to be eager to help this team be successful. And if you're not a player that can meet that standard, you're not going to get on the field. And so that standard's not going anywhere. Um, and matter of anything, we're just trying to raise it even more because our sights are set on national dominance. We want this to be a, a a uh, perennial powerhouse football program, and we're not asking permission to be great. We're gonna, we're putting ourselves out there every single day to say we want the absolute very best for this program. Um, but in that, um, our players are going to have to continue to rise up to the standards that are being set. And in doing so, as coaches, it's our responsibility to another one teach them all that they need to learn, support them, encourage them, um, and and also create the uh, the best learning environment possible for them to be uh, to achieve that kind of standard. Coach, middle of summer, you're still a few weeks away from opening camp, a few more weeks away from the opener, but now there's college football media days and you're headed off to coaches' meetings. The the ball's rolling, I guess, so to speak, it towards is. college football season. Uh, this is your first year of the GNAC expanding, affecting the conference schedule. Instead of playing home and away against everybody, only one game against each opponent counts in the conference standings. What's your evaluation of, of the schedule that's in front of your team this year? I'm extremely excited about the new freshness of the of the of the, the schedule. Having South Dakota Mines come on in uh, is outstanding. I know Stacy does a great job of being the head coach there. I think they're a solid program. I think they're definitely on the rise. Um, I'm also excited for the, the two new coaches that are coming into the program. I think if you look, my evaluation is this conference is uh, extremely underrated when it comes to the national spotlight, but it's probably one of the, it's one of the toughest conferences in the whole country. Uh, from top to bottom, all the head coaches and their coaching staff, are, they do an extremely great job. Um, every week, and you know this, every week you, as you follow us, it, it's a dogfight, and it's a four-quarter uh, it's a four-quarter battle that hey, you got to be prepared to even go to overtime. So the the players in this league are are extremely tough competitors, and they're talented. They're, uh, they're the kind of players out there that you love playing against because of that elevate of that competition. And our games as a fan for those who watch us and follow GNAC football. Uh, I think they're, they're getting their money's worth all the time. So the freshness that's coming with the new schedule is exciting. And uh, you know, I know as we talk tomorrow at the GNAC meetings, I think we're going to just kind of discuss how to make the very most of it as, a, as an organization, but then also as a, as a head coach, as we all know that um, there's an amazing respect for every one of us because uh, I tell you, this is some of the best football on the Division II level. And then finally, just... Uh, Give us one bold prediction for the 2014 mm -hmm. season and wrap up with what you're most excited about for the year. Uh, bold prediction. Uh, you know, not much for predictions, but I, bold one I'll stick out there is a uh, sellout crowd September 4th, nationally televised game. Uh, I know our fan base is extremely excited to get back out there. I know that uh, the, the Azusa City community and the local communities around us are excited. Uh, this is great to have uh, Division II football back in Southern California. The families of our recruits, the local, the local communities, they're all already eager to, and just blown up on social media how they want to be there that game. So the alumni base, I'm fired up for them. Um, so that's going to be a, it's an outstanding game. Perhaps even some fireworks. I think I've heard that. So it's going to be a great night. Uh, to the thing I'm looking forward to is this thing is about to, to set sail is just being with the team. Uh, I really love this program, love these players, um, every one of them. Uh, brings something so special and unique to us that makes this program rich. Uh, everybody gives a, a first-class contribution, and uh, I'm particularly excited for this recruiting class coming in. Uh, there, there is uh, thousands of thousands of people who are recruits as that prospective student athletes said, "Hey, look at us! Uh, we've picked out this group by hand. We believe they fit the bill. We believe they have the right heart to grow and become the the man that they want to be through this program." And I can't wait to spend time with them and just coach them hard, coach, and just let's go. Let's, let's get to become great and, and have a – it's a great adventure. And I have no clue how 2014 goes. I, I've learned this as a head coach now, doing my ninth season as a head coach. 
it's a great adventure. So just take it moment by moment and uh, just be prepared to, to, to take it all in as it goes. Great. Thanks, Coach.